Welcome to CAS 133, Columbia Gorge Community College, the Dallas, Oregon, Mrs. Hewitt instructor. We're going to be looking at the week two assignments. Now, this course is taught mostly in an online class version, but it sometimes has a hybrid offered. So the hybrid course from this point forward, of course it's the more orange version of it, will be seeing the same videos as the online course because at this point forward there are really no differences in the Moodle part of the classes. So moving forward, what are we going to be doing this week? We're looking at email, we have some internet projects, you're going to be looking at buying a computer, not that you have to really actually go out and buy one, but you're going to look at what is involved in making a reasonably good, well-informed choice when a computer is purchased. We're going to look at web browsers, and then of course you have your forum. So as you come into the week, you'll see you'll have your objectives here. You still have some support materials in case you get stuck, and you have the video that you're watching right now. Now I kind of broke the assignments up into one, two, three, and four. One and two kind of go together, so let me sort of walk you through those. You have a PowerPoint to download that has information about email and the directions for the assignment in that. Two sites to view documents to read about email netiquette, and really email netiquette for classes, online classes, whether it's 133 or any online class you take. Then you have a folder, so remember folders mean to open them. You have the PowerPoint to download, but there's some materials that go with it. They're kind of linked in there, but in reality they're probably not going to work well um, without having basically the links don't work when you download them in reality. So you're going to go in, you're going to download each one of those and view them. There are a couple of netiquette sites about general online netiquette versus email netiquette. So you're going to look at those. And then you're going to go to the netiquette assignment. Now this one is going to be something probably a little different for most of you. And so a couple of things you need to do. You need to make sure you've done the email material and you've gone through the web online netiquette. And then you're going to go use a Padlet. And I'm going to show you how that works here in a second. Each term I'll put a new link in so you won't see the same link that's in this video because we create a new one for every term and every class. And basically what you need to do is post a thought that goes with these questions. You need to do four of them. They're four questions. It needs to be a complete thought that's expressed in at least a full sentence. You need to add your first name and a last initial since this is out on the web. It's not open to the world, but you know, who knows who can stumble across things out there. So we're going to use first names and last initials. Last initials are because sometimes we have two people with the same name in a class. And any that don't get a name don't get credit. It's that simple. So you're going to take this link and you're going to just basically highlight it and copy it. You can go right click or control C. You're going to open a new tab up here and you're going to go either paste or I just control V. And you're going to hit enter, which will take you out to the Padlet. When you arrive at Padlet, you'll see that I've already posted to use this Padlet to post your thoughts about netiquette questions found in Moodle. You've got the questions already in Moodle. Hopefully you've even composed your answers possibly, maybe not, but you've thought about it. And to do the next post, you just basically do a double click. So I'm going to write an answer to question number one. Notice these are both at open. So I can go back here. What do you think netiquette is in one sentence? I've got it done. Now I could probably size this a little bit so I don't take up like the whole page. I can also grab the edge of it and maybe move it a little bit. And then when I click out in the gray, it goes there and there it is. And that first piece of my assignment is done. Now obviously if you post my answer, I'm not going to give you credit for it. So that is your Padlet experience you're going to do. 
And basically for each one you do appropriately, you get a set number of points that all put together is going to be worth 20 points like any other assignment. Then you're going to go back in here and you're going to do buying a computer. If you're a PC, you'll do these. If you're a Mac, you're going to do these because there are some differences on buying a computer. So you're going to watch the appropriate video. And then in the PowerPoint, it tells you basically what your assignment is. And you're going to do a response. That means like opening a Word document and typing me a paper. So you're going to type to me information about buying a computer. What's important to you? Don't tell me you want a Dell XYZ computer or you want an Apple MacBook Pro because we're not getting that specific. I want you to think about the features that you want, not necessarily the computer because the computer you want may be gone by tomorrow or in the next week or six months from now when you go to actually purchase. How much RAM and what is RAM? What about processors and why do you want what you want? What about any of the extras that come with PCs? You have things like DVD ROMs and webcams and all sorts of extra things. Macs, you don't get to make as many choices on. They kind of come, this is the prepackaged choice. You get to make two or three choices and by the computer. But what is it you want? What about size? What about battery life? What about weight? What about screen size? What about backlit keyboards on a PC? What about? So go down through the features that you think are important to you to have on a computer. Tell me what they are and why they're important. Please do not give me web links for a website that you looked up. In fact, you don't even have to go to the web. You shouldn't be. Uh, don't give me a specific brand or name that you want because that's not what we're looking for in this assignment. Moving on. You have a browser assignment and basically what you're going to be doing is watching the videos and then that's going to be this week's discussion form. So we're going to watch, or you're going to watch, three videos. I've already seen them. And then you're going to use those for your discussion conversation in the forum. Now, you're not quite done because you actually have two more assignments to do. You need to do two things that go with internet. So you're going to, again, you can do this right click, save link as. And I'm going to decide where I want it. I like my desktop just fine because it's my computer I'm using. And then I'm going to open it. Now, this is assuming I've already purchased or have um, Word on my machine. I'm going to hit enable editing. And your task for this week is a scavenger hunt. You're to use the websites I give you, and you're to go out and answer these questions. For example, I want you to learn how to use the Kelly Blue Book so you know how to look up car prices so you don't get ripped off the next time you want to buy or trade or sell a car. So go in and find out what the price of your car would be, and if you don't have one, pick an imaginary one. And please don't go for a Ferrari or something like that. Pick, you know, a Chevy or a Ford or a Kia or something that's reasonable. Then you're going to move down here and you're going to go to a website and it cannot be the Columbia Gorge website. You're already attending that. It says a college that you are interested in attending like after this or next type of thing. And you're to go in and try to find the tuition. They are a pain to find. I don't know why colleges sort of like hide this information. Maybe they don't want you to know how expensive going to college is, in case you haven't noticed. So, this is going to be your task here. And you can type right under this. Just by going click here, you can type your answers right there. You don't have to, like, have a separate document. Then you're going to do a weather forecast. And you'll notice I gave you um, how to do a screenshot. So a lot of times you can use a screenshot for doing that particular assignment. Then you're going to go to this kidsfirst.org and you're going to look up a movie. It might be one you want to go to or one you've recently been to or just because I told you to look up a movie, you're going to go find one. And then you're going to look at the idea of taking a 10-year-old to it. 
and based on the rating and the review, not your personal opinion, I am well aware that some people are more than willing to take a five-year-old to, you know, an outrageously R-rated movie, and they think nothing of it. That is not the answer to this. If you don't know what the ratings mean, go please look them up, and then type in here your movie name, and your Basically, your conclusion to, is this movie, based on the review, based on the rating, appropriate for a 10-year-old? And that's how I'm going to score it, is based on the review and based on the rating, is it appropriate for a 10-year-old? Not whether you would personally take a 10-year-old to it or not. Then you're going to go to Google Maps and go, or MapQuest, whichever you prefer, and you're going to get the driving directions from the College to the Portland International Airport. And as I say, a screenshot there may be helpful for you. That way you don't have to copy and paste, you know, the whole list of directions. But that's up to you. You can copy and paste if you would rather. Now this last one's a little bit tricky. It's going to talk about a brownie camera. This is what a brownie camera is, just so you know. And then it gives you one of these web stories out there, in this case about Pearl Harbor, which is real. It's in Hawaii. That's where... Um, the bombings happened that really pushed the U.S. into World War II on December 7th of 1941, very historic day. And so the story says that there are images that were found in this camera, this brownie camera, taken by a sailor, and it's been stored in a footlocker up till now. So your job is to go into, into the link here at Snopes.com and figure out if the story's true, Partly true, not true at all, and then tell me about it. What parts are true, what parts are false, why are they true, why are they false, those types of things. Hit your save and be sure you submit it back to me by uploading it in Moodle. Now you're going to basically do exactly the same thing. This is a copy that if you don't have Office, that you could basically copy and paste it and put it into... Um, WordPad and write the answers to it. So that is only if you do not have Word. If you have Word, please use the Word copy. It's so much nicer for both of us. Then you're going to do Internet Good Sites the same exact way. Get it downloaded, type your answers into it, get it all finished up, save it, and upload it again. So let's look at what else you have to submit. Down here is your submission. You're sending two emails. They were part of that email assignment direction. And you can read the directions right there, but you're going to send two emails, and I'm going to put the grade right there when I get them. You're going to upload the scavenger hook, you're going to upload the internet good sites, and you're going to upload the buying computer response. Now, remember, I'm going to get the answers from Padlet off of Padlet, so I will go get those at the end of the week and give you credit from there. I think I'll probably add a line in here that adds Padlet grade. Just looking at that now, I've decided I think I want that. And then you have the Are You Done checklist. That should take you to the end of week two. See you again for week three.